little yarnivores, Fiber Spider, back again to finish this tutorial for you. And so as you can see, I have been knitting, knitting, knitting. And from the base here to where I've left off is about nine inches in total. Now, you know, this is not exact. This is to each their own and how you like your hat to fit. And so what I did was I kept going and going and going with the repeat. And as you can see, this line right here, this is where we tried to do our jogless seam. Now, as you can see, it is not perfect by any means. No, life never is. However, this is much better than if you just kept going round and round and round without doing the, uh, you know, the, the lifting up of the bottom leg. You know, believe me, this is a lot better, you know. And if you wear this in the back, you're good to go. It's what I always do. So, <clears throat> now what I did was, to finish this up, I made sure that for this particular pattern, see how, all right, here's where we have our first stitch. And I've got my first diamond going up there. Well, down here, we have our joining, and then we have our diamond shape down there. That's just me personally and me being persnickety about how I like my pattern to be. And then, after I felt that it was long enough, I then did two rounds with just the peacock color. And that way, I won't have to worry about the, the letter color anymore. All I did really was I just, I cut the yarn and I kept knitting, you know, simple as that. And I'm going to sew in this end later. And that way, because I'm going to be doing the drawstring method, um, I wanted the fabric to be just a little bit thinner at the, at the crown. And you'll see what I mean. So then what I did was I cut a really long length of yarn here and got my little yarn needle already threaded and so now what we're going to do is we're going to actually thread this yarn through all of these stitches here and to make it a little bit easier I'm going to actually turn this inside out and that way we can hide our stitching a little bit better when we get up to that point. So I'm just gonna flip this inside out, being very careful not to lose any stitches because that would be, that would be very sad. You don't wanna see me when I'm very sad because I would be very sad. All right, so we have our work flipped inside out and all you have to do, this is really simple, although it can be a little scary. So making sure that the working yarn is on the, the right side needle. And then <clears throat> with the left, we are going to start by threading the yarn through each of our loops And it's really as easy as that for this particular cast off method. And there are other methods and I would like to show you those as well in future videos. So you get a couple on there and then you just pull your whole length through. And then you do some more. And you just keep doing this all the way around, being very careful not to drop any of your stitches. And so I'm going to do this all the way around, and then I will show you what to do. Then I will show you what to do next. All right, so I have just a few more stitches to thread on, and then we can proceed to the next step like so. Alright, so now we have ourselves essentially a tube, right? Okay, well, what we need to do now is we need to cinch this up. 
So, what we need to do is pick up the slack. Now, technically, you could just pull from this strand and try to tighten this all up. However, um, that can be problematic. So, what I like to do, and for the most part, this does work for me, is actually, so we have our tail here, and we threaded through this, you know, this section here, and this is where we started, right? So, what we're going to do is we're going to find our yarn that's threaded through the stitches, and we're going to pull on our yarn to cinch up these stitches a little bit. And then we're going to move our way to the side, and then we're going to pull up some more yarn. Also, I find that this is a good idea because the last thing that you want to do is pull on your yarn so hard that it snaps, and then you are in a world of needing some aspirin or wine or something. I mean, oh, uh, you don't want to do that because what we're doing right now is basically this is a lifeline drawstring and you don't want it to break. You know, you do want to pull it tight, but, you know, do not want this yarn to snap. Otherwise, you might snap, and that's no good. So, just pulling our yarn, <clears throat> and we're cinching it as we go. And we're just going to work our way around. And it's really this easy. Now, the other techniques that are available for casting off and finishing up the crown, they are a lot more time consuming. And also, if you are a beginner, they are a lot harder because you've got decreases and you're working with double pointed needles or the magic loop method with circulars, and that can be a little tricky. So for beginners or for those that don't want a world of stress, this is a great technique, and I think it looks really nice, too. So we're almost done here. All right. And just going to pull some of these remaining stitches. got myself a bit of a snag, but I will fix that. Be right back. Alrighty, so as you can see, the opening is nice and cinched. However, because obviously we cannot have a hole this big at the top, and because I do not want to cinch it or attempt to cinch it anymore, because I'm already putting a lot of strain on the yarn, and it does have to go through a hundred stitches, because I didn't do any decreasing. So, I don't want to pull any tighter because I don't want this to break, you know. So you got to be careful. I'm warning you now, I am not liable if your string breaks because you pulled too hard. <laughs> All right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to stitch across and cinch this up a bit more. So to do that, basically what we're going to do is, and this is also actually the reason why I did a couple of rounds of just the green, because it'll hide this stitching a little bit better, okay? So what we're going to do is almost like a web, <laughs> spider web, or a clock, we're going to go in underneath one of these stitches, and then go across one of those stitches. All right, it's a little wonky here. Sorry. I'm going to go across and pull that. And then we can go through 
the same spots yet again to reinforce those. We're sort of tacking them in place. Yeah. And then we're going to grab some more stitches. See right now I've got an opening on this side and an opening on this side. So what I could do is grab from the middle over here and then grab from the middle on the other side. Sorry if it's a little difficult to actually see what it is that I'm doing. There we go. So stitch this closed. And then reinforce it again. Also, if you have a metal needle, this might work out better. Um, <clears throat> all right. And then let's see how it's looking. We'll flip it inside out. Well, right side out. There. It's pretty good. And so yes, it does have a, a bunched up top to it. Now some people, they like it. Some people, they don't like it. Really, it is a matter of taste, I know. So that being said, um, in a future video, I plan to, I don't know when, but in a future video, I would like to do an alternate form of casting off. Now, so that's that's pretty much what it will look like, you know. Um, and of course, you don't want to leave it like this, naturally, no. You know, you want to reinforce your stitching a little bit more, and you can connect it a little bit more, and of course, knot it, sew in your ends. You know, like for instance, you know, got a whole bunch of bunchiness up here, right? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some more of my stitches. And because this is so bunched together, nobody is going to see this. Yeah, that is one of the really cool things that, yeah, no. <laughs> Unless if somebody is a giant standing over you and examining the crown of your head and dying to find some imperfections, they're not going to find any. Okay. So this aspect of doing this sort of bind off really is cool because it does not have to be perfect. With the other, where you're doing a lot of decreasing and so forth, if it doesn't look neat, it looks terrible. You know, so this one it's sort of a quick and simple way of achieving where you want to get. Okay. I'll go through that one once again. And go through my loop that I just created. And boom, we got ourselves a knot. And I'm going to knot that a bit further, and I'm going to reinforce it, and sew in my ends, and it's all done. So there you are, my dears. You know, and I'm going to sew in the remaining ends that I have here. And we have ourselves a really fabulous Fair Isle hat. Ta-da! Love it. Absolutely love it. So now listen. Um, there are also some other techniques like catching your floats and things like that. And I would like to do some future videos. Just bear with me. Give me time. Um, but this will give you a really good start on how to do the technique. Okay. So listen, until the next video, stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Thank you.